Hello, everyone. Welcome to This Week in Economics with Robert Wenzel. I'm Robert Wenzel. This week's topic is why capitalists will never save capitalism. Now, many, many people think that capitalists should be at the forefront of advancing free market capitalism. But is this really true? What a capitalist is, in, in sort of a broad sense, you might have somebody that's an entrepreneur who has great vision in terms of uh, finding products that people want at great prices. Uh, a capitalist might be considered a CEO who has great ability to uh, manage people and assets. Or a capitalist, in, in a narrower sense, might be someone that's an investor. But these are not the same things as understanding the capitalist framework. Think of it this way. Michael Jordan was a great basketball player. He had great court vision. He had great peripheral vision to see who was around him and where he could throw the basketball or from what angles to shoot the ball. He also had great leaping ability. But would you want Michael Jordan to operate on your knee because he had great ability to, uh, to jump? Would you want him to operate on your eyes because he had great vision, court vision? Someone who actually performs a function is not necessarily the best person to explain or understand what the bigger framework is. And, and the same thing that applies to Michael Jordan with, with knees and eyes applies to the capitalist. Just because a capitalist, which is could be an entrepreneur in the broader vision, a uh, top CEO, a um, investor, just because someone is able to work within the capitalist system does not mean they understand the system itself. Remember, laborers work in capitalist systems also, and no one expects them to understand how the capitalist system works. The same thing should apply to capitalists. It, 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 it does not follow if someone is a good capitalist in, in this broad sense that I'm talking about, that they necessarily understand the capitalist system. So that's the first problem with expecting capitalists to advance the capitalist system, the free market system. They may not understand it. There's a second problem, and that is that Sometimes the incentives are lined up whereby it makes sense for a capitalist in this broader perspective, from their perspective, to go against free market capitalism. Someone who understands the complete framework of capitalism may understand that it doesn't make sense to go against it, but uh, a, a capitalist in this broad sense of entrepreneurs and uh, CEOs and uh, investors, they may think, well, maybe I should get involved with government and go against the free market system. And then thirdly, and this is the one that is really, really rarely understood, is that capitalists have no sense of the history of power and what happens when people who are hungry for power advance. Right now, we're in a period where there is a tremendous advance by those who want to seek power. And people who want to seek power, where that's their goal, will use any opportunity they can, any tool they can to advance that power. And the capitalists, in this broad sense, do not get that, or they would not be doing some of the things they're doing now. So let's, let's take a look at some of these things. First of all, with regard to uh, understanding how the capitalist system works, how the free market system works, the Nobel Prize winning economist Friedrich Hayek once wrote, the curious task of economics is to demonstrate to men how little they really know about what they imagine they can design, okay? So he's saying that it's really, really difficult to understand how the whole capitalist system works. But everybody thinks on, on a, from, from a surface level, if they don't dig deep into it, that they know how the system works and how to design it. And who, more than anyone else, 
would be comfortable with the idea that they could design a capitalist, quote unquote, capitalist system than a CEO who's successful in managing people and assets. But it's two completely different worlds. But why would the capitalists get that, especially given the types of education that is going on now throughout school age people, throughout college people? They, they are not getting exposed at all to what capitalism is about. And that's not a surprise because you really, the, Marx always talked about the struggle between labor and capital. And, and that's, that's really not true. That's demonstrably not true. Okay. But there is a struggle between the state and free markets. That is a, is a great, great struggle. And the more that uh, schooling is financed by governments, the more it will promote the state perspective. And you don't get any perspective at all in schools at all with regard to the anti-state perspective. And that makes sense from the perspective of the state, but that's not good for society overall. But that's what we have. So all these people coming up, all these CEOs coming up, all these laborers coming up, they all get exposed to why the government does this and why they do that and why this helps and, and so on. But is, do they really, is that really the case? People who study free market economics would argue it's different. But again, these are people that are outside the, the greater masses. There are very, very few people that really truly get into the weeds the way Hayek says has to be done to understand how the system works. Uh, now, now, the other thing is sometimes a, uh, a capitalist in this broad sense will uh, see to it from his short-term perspective that it's to his advantage to side up to the state, to side up to power. So he will get an advantage. For example, Jeff Bezos is Amazon. He is advocating a $15 minimum wage. Now, one possibility here is he may be doing this because he sees it as a short-term edge against his competitors. He has to pay people $15 and more to get him to work in a, a, a warehouse. You got no windows. You have to just do boring work. Who's going to do that for, uh, for, for less? On the other hand, a shop owner may be able to pay somebody to work in a retail store where you see people come in. Uh, it's light out. You see what's going on on the street. That a retail shop might be able to pay twelve dollars, and it might be the case that if the retailer was forced by a minimum wage to pay fifteen dollars, he might not be able to hire the person, or might even have to close down. We don't know. Now Bezos may understand that, so it's from his short-term perspective that he would call for $15 minimum wage because it would wipe out competitors. Or it might be a case where he doesn't understand how bad the uh, minimum wage is. I've put out uh, uh, a couple of pieces on this. If you want to visit economics.academy slash minimum, that's economics.academy slash minimum, you will see two videos I put up where I discuss the, uh, the problems with the minimum wage. There are tremendous problems. They just cause, they cause unemployment and they also lower the standard of living for everyone and explain how and why. So Bezos either doesn't get that or he doesn't care about it because he knows if he advocates for a $15 minimum wage, it's gonna wipe out competitors. There are other CEOs. You've got the uh, founder of a Salesforce, Mark Benioff, he says, businesses are the greatest platforms for change. Now he's ta not talking about change in terms of offering new products. He's talking about societal change. Again, this is a guy who, who built a, a, a great business. And because of this, he thinks he has the ability to, to design all of society. And that, that, that is business's goal to do that uh, on a grand scale, far beyond offering products to, uh, to customers. He's, uh, for example, in favor of basic income because he thinks in, uh, artificial intelligence is gonna be a problem. He, he, again, he 
He does not understand the basics of the economics there. It's really what's known as the lump of labor fallacy that uh, there's a limited number of jobs and that if some jobs are eliminated, there's nothing else to, to take it over. That's not the case. If robots are taking over the monotonous jobs, it opens up the ability for more people to be in creative jobs. And we, we certainly need a lot more creative people explaining how the economy works for one. So he doesn't get that at all. He's also in favor of uh, uh, the uh, uh, equality among salaries between genders, which this is basic economics again, where he doesn't understand where it would be extremely, extremely unusual, unusual, especially in a complex economy like ours, for there to be significant differences in wages for the exact same job uh, between men and women. That just is, is not the case. There's been tons of study on it. And, and just from a deductive perspective, you, you, you wouldn't it wouldn't make sense to, to see this occur because someone who is interested in profit would pay a little bit more to get those people that are undercompensated somewhere else. There's extreme, extreme incentive for someone to be anti-racist or anti-gender. It makes no sense in a complex society for that to exist to any any significant degree at all. Not a problem. And, and of course, there's, again, fundamental economics that can explain all this. So, uh, so, so we've got situations like that. Another case, for example, you, you might have corporations calling for new regulations that take, for example, even requiring a, a labor manual. Well, if Amazon has to put out a labor manual or Boeing or Walmart or any major company that costs $10,000, well, they just call up their lawyer, the general counsel at the firm or outside firm and say, put this together, here's your $10,000. But for a small shop to have to do that, it's an extreme expense. So here's another case where incentive is such for uh, competitors who, who do not care about the long-term problems with power to sort of side up to power because it'll eliminate some of their competitors. But what they don't get is power is extremely, extremely dangerous. There are different periods. There are periods when power advances slowly, and then there are periods when power advances very, very rapidly. And as I say, right now we're in a period where power advances very, very rapidly. And again, I come back to Hayek in his book, The Road to wrote to serfdom he wrote in chapter 10 that the, the chapter was called why the worst could get on top and he talked about those people that are power hungry and will do whatever it takes to to get the power and what all of these capitalists in the broad sense here the the entrepreneurs the top ceos the great investors what they don't understand over for the majority of them is that if power advances enough they become the targets because the people that are seeking power will attempt to move anybody that is in their way. That's been throughout history. We saw it in, in the Soviet Union, millions and millions died. We saw that in Mao's China. We saw that in uh, 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 Cambodia. It's a very, very, very dangerous game. These capitalists, the entrepreneurs and the CEOs are playing. They don't understand the end game here. It's always difficult to know in advance where we are on the scale, but it's clearly a period right now where it's advancing and the CEOs have no clue. When they side up with Black Lives Matter and donate money to Black Lives Matter, who are have publicly stated they are trained Marxist, it is absolutely insane for any company, any CEO, any capitalist to be funding money to fuel these ideas that there's these great struggles that that really don't exist because it's a power game. The, uh, the people behind these power games understand where the hot buttons are, what they can push to uh, get upset 
in the society so they can gain more control. That's what it's all about. And the CEOs, A, they may be posing to uh, uh, appear as though they are uh, uh, with, with current cultural norms or trends, or they may be just trying to buy these power freaks off. But it's, again, a dangerous game because these guys are really, really big targets. Bezos, Benioff, top CEOs, they are targets. And it's just that the power freaks do not have the power right at this point to make the move to push them out and grab whatever assets, whatever they have under control. But that's the way we have seen it throughout history. So here's the problem. You've got capitalists who don't understand the fundamentals of how the capitalist system works. And it's not taught in schools because the schools are all, even, even private schools are, are funded and regulations are set. So it's very, very difficult to promote uh, uh, free market perspectives. And it's certainly not promoted in public schools and most colleges now. You have a, a situation where uh, some of the power players in terms of capitalists think they can side up with people who want pure political power. They don't understand the history of what happens in situations like that. And then you have uh, uh, situations where they think they're going to get away. Maybe, maybe they realize it, that the, it's a dangerous game, but they'll be able to get away with it. But you just never know where we are on that timeline when things get so severe that the power freaks will make their move and go after the capitalists that now are playing footsie with these power freaks. Very, very, very dangerous game they're playing and they don't understand it. So what's the solution? I come back to the economist Hayek. He talked about something called secondhand dealers. In modern usage, where we have COVID panic, where we have uh, the internet, I would call secondhand dealers really super spreaders of ideas. I would call them influencers. And basically what needs to happen is the super spreaders and the influencers have to be successful at spreading the word about the best kind of society to live in. So you have to have the initial people who create the ideas and then people who have the capability of spreading those ideas. They're two different people. The people who create the ideas are not necessarily the people that know how to spread it the best. So you've got uh, these people that are creating the ideas who, who are at the top, who are different from the capitalists completely, who are different from the laborers, who understand the framework and are more scientific oriented and are deep thinkers. And then you have the super spreaders, the influencers who are influenced by the deeper thinkers and sort of get the idea and get it out to the masses. And the, the masses don't have to understand things in detail. All they really need to understand is that power in, the, in terms of government power is extremely, extremely dangerous. And we should always object to that kind of power. The idea is to be anti-state because when you move in the direction of power, you're moving in the direction of supporting people that if they get the chance, and as Hayek taught, the worst get to the top, if they get the chance, they will grab as much power as they can. There is no need. The top economists and philosophers will tell you there is no need for a grand major power center, state power center. That is always trouble. The free market can solve problems. I point to my own book, Foundations of Private Property Society, where I talk about how many of the things that people believe can only be run by government can actually be run in a much more civilized way by just recognizing private property. 
That's the idea we need to get out. Not a complex idea, but just that power in the hands of government is very, very dangerous. That it is important to be anti-state because a growing state is always about controlling people. And sometimes the control gets fierce and dangerous and many, many, many people die. We know that through history, that history is not taught in schools. The tens of millions that died in the Soviet Union, in Germany, in Mao's China, in Cambodia, those are never taught. Those histories are not taught. The CEOs don't understand that. The entrepreneurs don't understand that. They may be posers with people who seek power, who pick this topic and that topic to sort of advance power. If they really understood what was behind it, they certainly wouldn't advance this, even if sometimes they might get a short-term benefit. So that's the problem. The capitalists are the wrong people. Their focus is different. They haven't been educated to understand what the problem is here. What is needed is super spreaders of freedom, of liberty, and anti-state, anti-power. We don't have enough of them, and we need more by far, because we are again advancing in a very, very dangerous direction towards more and more power for government. And you don't know when that flips to where it becomes really, really ugly. No one wants that to happen, but don't count on the capitalists. We might have one or two here or there who are really kind of noble citizens who understand the problem and want to help out and get the uh, super spreaders educated and the influencers educated on why uh, free markets are important. But those are few and far between. But that's what we need. The people need to understand the danger ahead and the capitalists are not going to do it for us. They're not meant to. They're a whole different breed. It's a mistake to depend upon them. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out my website, economicpolicyjournal.com, where I talk about the economy, economic policy, economic theory, economic personalities, Monday through Friday. And then I post more on Saturday and Sunday. I don't stop. That's economicpolicyjournal.com. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week.